from Cairo Up, and I want to show you three valuable tests that can help save us time and help make the right diagnosis. One of the things that I sometimes have a challenge with is differentiating whether the patient's hip and buttock complaint is arising from their hip or it's arising from their lumbar spine. Some of the clues to hip pathology would be that the patient reports they have groin crease pain, that they have trouble walking steps or trouble throwing their leg up to tie their shoes. But one of the signs that can really help us differentiate this is the C sign. If the patient makes a C with their hand and places it over the top of their hip, that's a pretty good indicator that that patient's pathology is likely arising from the hip. The second test I want to talk about helps differentiate a cervical radiculopathy from a shoulder problem, like maybe a rotator cuff tendinopathy. It uses the helpful concept that someone with a cervical radiculopathy will have sensitization of the peripheral nerves going into their arm. Peripheral nerves, remember, don't like compression and they don't like stretch. So we're going to take advantage of that concept with a test called the arm squeeze test. This is simply grasping the patient's arm and squeezing with a good amount of force, enough to create a little bit of ischemia, and if that peripheral nerve is irritable, it's going to scream and the patient's not going to like that compression. So if there's pain upon arm squeeze, we're pretty certain that it's a cervical radiculopathy, whereas a local shoulder pathology like a rotator cuff tendinopathy likely wouldn't be exacerbated by that. There's very good sensitivity of 96% for this test, and the specificity is 91 to 100%, so a useful test that you can put into your toolbox. And finally, no discussion of quick, simple tests would be complete without mentioning the most well-recognized test, the papillomonic test for de Quervain's disease, and that is uh, Finkelstein's test. Finkelstein's test, though, I want to tell you two things about it that you might not know. Number one, it should be divided into four components. The first is to simply have their patient uh, hold out their hand and let their arm relax so that their arm and wrist drop slightly into ulnar deviation. Next, we're going to have the patient actively take their wrist into, into ulnar deviation as far as they can. And then we as a practitioner for step three are going to force that a little bit further with overpressure. And finally, the last component, bringing their thumb down into some opposition. By doing it in a graded format, we're able to then monitor the patient's progress, whereas initially they may have pain just upon the active movement, and later as your treatment progresses, now it requires step four to get that, that symptom to be pro provoked. I hope you enjoyed uh, these three tests. You can check them out on ChiroUp.com for more detailed descriptions, and we look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks for watching.